Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our Resource Gatherer AI. Let's set up player control so we can tell our units where to harvest. Let's get started. Alright, so here's the scene so far. We have the Gatherer, he goes to a node, mines it, drops the resource in storage, and goes back to finding another node. Right now he's deciding where to mine, let's add the ability to tell him where to go. So first off, let's create a very simple text mesh to see what the gatherer is carrying. So in here, let's make a new game object, call it inventory text mesh, and let's add a text mesh to display the inventory amount. Alright, so there's the text mesh on top of the unit that we can use to display what he is carrying. So let's go in our gather AI code. In here, let's grab a reference to the text mesh, so a private text mesh, and call it inventory text mesh. And we're going to grab it on the awake in here. And let's make a function to update it, so private void update inventory text. If we do have inventory, then let's display it. So if gold inventory amount, if it is bigger than zero, then go into the inventory text mesh dot text and set it to the amount that we are carrying. If we are not carrying anything, then just hide it by setting the text to nothing. Okay, so we want to update it on awake and update it every time the gold inventory amount changes. So in here, update the text and in here, update it as well. All right, let's test and see how it's going. So there you go, it's hidden, now he mines, and you see one, two, three, and now he drops and it vanishes again. Okay, great. So very simple and we can now view what the unit is carrying. Now let's set up a way to click our resource nodes. In order to do that, let's go in here into the gold node game object. I'm going to add a box collider 2D and set it to occupy roughly the size of the sprite. So we have a box collider, now we need to be able to click it. To do that, I'm going to use the script button sprite, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. This script allows me to easily capture clicks on this specific box collider. So in our code here, we previously created a resource node that handles the node logic and is constructed using a reference to the resource node transform. So here in the constructor, let's capture the transform clicks. So transform.getComponent of type button sprite, which we have to go up here using code monkey.utils. And here it is, the button sprite, which has an action called click funk, which is triggered whenever we click on the specific button. Now in order to keep our code clean, we're going to fire an event when this transform is clicked. So let's go up here and make a public static event event handler on resource node clicked. In order to use event handler, we have to do using the system namespace. And here when we click, the action that we're going to fire is going to fire that event. So if on resource node click if it is not null. So if we have subscribers, let's trigger it by sending this an event rx empty. So this way we can capture clicks with another class and this class doesn't need to know about it. So let's capture those clicks on our game handler. On awake here, let's subscribe to that event, which is on resource node dot on resource node clicked. Now the event sender object is going to be of type resource node, so let's cast it to that. So set a resource node, resource node equals the sender as a resource node. Since the sender is sent as an object, we have to cast it first to the resource node. All right, so in here we are being notified when a resource node is clicked. Now we have to tell the gatherer to mine that. So first let's go in our gatherer AI and stop him looking for nodes automatically, which he's doing in here. By commenting out this line, he is no longer automatically searching for nodes. Instead, let's make a public function to give him a resource node. So go down here, make a public void, set resource node. And here we're going to receive a resource node, resource node. And inside, let's set our internal resource node. So this dot resource node equals this resource node. 
So if the unit is idle, the next time we set the node, he's gonna move towards it. All right, now back in our game handler, let's go up here and add a reference to our gatherer AI. So make a serialized field for the gatherer AI and gatherer AI. And when we click on the node, we call this function. And here, let's go into our gatherer AI and set the resource node to this resource node. All right, so let's test and see how it's going. All right, so here's the gatherer. He's completely still, which makes sense since he's no longer automatically searching for a resource node. And now when I click on this one and boom, there he goes, he's going to mine that node. Now when he finishes, he goes back to the storage and once again, he stops and waits for another arm. Now I send him in here and he goes, okay, great. Now let's make him automatically keep mining nodes if they are near the one that he was ordered to mine. So in here, let's make a cluster of nodes. So put this one in here, another one here, in here and in here. So when he finishes mining the target resource node, let's tell him to ask the game handler for a valid node near that one. So on game handler, let's make that function. We were simply using get resource node. Now let's make a get resource node near position. And we're going to receive a vector three for the position. So in here, let's set a max distance amount. And here, if it has no more resources, we are removing it from the list. Or if the vector three dot distance between the position and the temp resource node list i dot get position, if that distance is bigger than the max distance, then we're also going to remove it from the list. So this gets removed from the list if it either has no more resources or too far. And let's make a static function to call this one. So in here, before we move to storage, instead of setting the resource node back to null, let's ask the game handler for get resource node near the resource node position. So when this one is depleted, we're going to look for another one near that position. All right, so now on the game handler up here, currently we're receiving three separate things, but instead of that, let's receive an array of gold node transform array. And when creating, let's simply go for each. All right, so we now have just one array instead of having multiple variables. So let's set that array and fill it up with all of these gold nodes. It has the array, let me unlock the inspector, select all of these and drag it all in there. Okay, let's test and let's see how it's going. Right there he is, he is staying still. I'm going to mine this one. He goes there, he mines it, two, three. Now he drops it on storage, he stays still. Now let's mine this one. So let's go in there, now he's mining, one, two, three. Okay, now he's gonna drop it on storage and yep, he picked another position in there and now he's mining another resource node, depletes it, goes back, goes to another one. Now he's mining the final one and when he finishes, Boom, there you go. He stays idle since there are no more nodes near these ones. All right, so we have exactly the behavior we wanted. So there you have it. We added support for controlling our gatherer by telling him where to go to mine a specific node. Once he finishes with that node, he decides to look for nodes that are near that one. And if there are, he goes there. If not, he stops and waits for another order. In the next video, we're going to add support for multiple gatherers. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.